Come on, let's keep on praising. Come on, put your chocolate hands together this morning. Let's give him one more hand cup of celebration. For truly he is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. Come on, choir. Come on, praise him. is in the house. Let me try it this way. 
there aren't that many people who I cut you over. I, I might cut you for every bitch sometimes. Come on, y'all, let's give God praise once again for our pastor. God bless you, brother. Amen. It is so good to be standing on the rock one more time. To all of the deacons, to fellow clergy, to all of the mothers, the officers of this great church, to this music ministry, God bless you. It is truly my honor and privilege to bring you greetings on behalf of the other best church, the Mount Olive Baptist Church in Stockbridge. Let me also recognize the love of my life, my first lady, my wife, Reverend Dr. Elaine Gaddis, Raven and White. It is so good to see so many familiar faces that we've come to love over the years. Like I said, it's good to be standing on the rock one more time. It is not my task to be long today. I have one assignment to bring a word from the Lord. And the good news is that there is a word from the Lord. A word that I think is actually prophetically appropriate on a day like today. So if you don't mind, I would like to invite your attention to the New Testament epistle of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. If you don't know where 1 Timothy is, it's before 2 Timothy. Timothy chapter 1 I'm going to be reading verses 12 through 17 I'm going to be reading this morning from the New International Version of the text I would ask you to read along quietly or silently from whatever translation that you have <laughs> hear now a word from the Lord I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service, even though I was once a blasphemer, and a persecutor, and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of who I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me the worst of sinners Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example of those who would believe in him and receive eternal life here it is now to the king eternal immortal invisible the only God be honor and glory forever church folk don't know when to shout and ever amen that's it the word of God for the people of God somebody ought to say thanks be to God you may take your seats in the presence of the Lord the grass withers the flower fadeth thereof but the word of our God shall stand forever Please keep your Bibles open, keep your Bibles open, keep your applications unlocked. Look again with me for a point of emphasis at the first few, first few words in verse 12. Here's what it says, I thank Christ Jesus, 
our Lord. Under the unction and direction of the Holy Spirit, I want to put a tag on that portion of scripture and preach this morning from this simple thought. Be sure to tell him thank you. Be sure to tell him thank you. Come on, grab your neighbor by the hand. Let's come into agreement. Let's have a quick word of prayer. I believe it's important for the saints to touch and agree and come into agreement that we might position ourselves to hear and receive a word from our God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. For this is the day that you have made. We thank you, God, for allowing us to be in this sacred space. Call St. Peter one more time. You have been good to us. If we had 1,000 tongues, we just couldn't say thank you enough. But with the one tongue that we do have, we give you the highest praise. We say hallelujah. We say hallelujah. Preach, Holy Ghost. Hide this preacher behind your cross. Baptize my mind and my mouth that I might say what you would have me to say. Use me now to preach your word that somebody might be saved. Somebody might be set free. Somebody might receive the strength to run on a little while longer. We love you and we thank you for what you're about to do in this place. It is in the matchless name of Jesus that we pray that every believer say, Amen. Come on, help me out real quick. Turn to your neighbor one time. Say, neighbor, oh neighbor, be sure to tell him thank you. Okay, that was the wrong neighbor. Look at the other neighbor. Look at, look at the other one. That looked like they're glad to be here this morning. Say, neighbor, oh neighbor, be sure to tell him thank you. Every hand lifted across the sanctuary, repeating after me. Say, speak, Lord. I'm listening. Now, if you're ready to hear a word from the Lord, come on, put your hands together. Let's give God one more good God bless. Preach, Holy Ghost. My brothers and sisters, in Psalm 118, and again in Psalm 136, both of the psalmists begin their proclamations of praise with these words. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Allow me to suggest to you that the psalmist came to the same conclusion. That is, when God's been good to you, the proper response is to lift up your dignified hands. Open up your dignified mouths and tell the Lord thank you. I can't speak for any of y'all, but as for me, I've reached a point in my life now where I can't come into God's house without a thank you on me somewhere. I, I can't come into the Lord's house without lifting up my hands. I can't come into the Lord's house with telling them how much I thank them. Here's why. Because the Lord's been downright good to me. He's brought me a mighty long way. He's been blessing me over and over and over again. And I know that God's been good to you because he's shown up been good to me. In other words, I believe I'm not the only one in here who can testify that the Lord's been good to you. And since you and I know that the Lord's been good to you, now would be a good time in the worship service. Lift up your hands and open up your mouth. And give the Lord the best praise that you have. Now would be a good time to tell the Lord thank you. I feel like preaching this a little bit now. In a very real sense, this is what today's text is actually all about. It's about a moment in the life of the Apostle Paul where he had to take a pause for the cause and tell the Lord thank you. Let me give you the context of the text. You see, the context of today's text is that Paul is writing a letter to his young protege, to a young preacher by the name of Timothy. 
And as Paul is writing this letter to Timothy, he's writing to Timothy to talk to Timothy and to teach Timothy about serving our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But a funny thing happens, Pastor Thomas, in, a, in the midst of Paul's writing, because as Paul is writing to Timothy about serving the Lord, Paul takes a pause to thank the Lord. And it actually kind of makes sense when you think about it. Because if you ever talk about the Lord for too long, you begin to think about how good the Lord's been to you. And when you think about how good the Lord's been to you, you can't help but to give God a word of thanksgiving. My old pastor used to say it this way when it comes to this business of giving the Lord a praise of thanksgiving. All you really need is a mirror and a memory. Because every time you look at your fine self in the mirror and just think about how far the Lord has brought you, you can't help but to tell the Lord thank you. I believe the songwriter said it best for the songwriter said when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Let me do a pew check real quick. Is there anybody here who brought a hallelujah with you to St. Peter this morning? Come on, if that's your testimony, that's given the highest praise. Shout hallelujah. I start to feel like preaching a little bit more now. makes it clear that in the midst of writing this missive to a young preacher named Timothy, Paul had to take a pause and tell the Lord thank you. And I just believe if you pay attention to the text, what you'll find, watch, is that what Paul is thanking the Lord for is also what you and I ought to thank the Lord for as well. Can I tell you what we ought to thank the Lord for? Y'all not talking to me yet. Let me try that again. I said, can I tell you what we ought to thank the Lord for? Good, because I was going to tell you anyway. Here it is. We, 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 we ought to thank the Lord, watch, for His grace. Y'all ain't going to help me preach this morning. Let me try that again. I, I, I said, we ought to thank the Lord for His grace. It's right there. The text, I'm preaching the Word of God. It's right there in verse 14. Here's what Paul says. He says, the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly are y'all reading your bibles i'm i ask you to keep your bibles open i'm preaching the word of god he says the grace of our lord was poured out on us abundantly and here's the shout the same grace that was poured out abundantly on paul is the same grace that's been poured out abundantly on you and me god don't know when to shout let me rewind and say that again i said the abundant grace that was poured out on paul is the same abundant grace that's been poured out on me and you. Can I get a witness here? Let me teach real quick. Uh, the songwriter said that grace is amazing. And the reason that grace is amazing is because grace is the Lord's unmerited favor towards you and me. Y'all still missing it. Uh, grace is what enables us to receive blessings that we don't even deserve. Y'all still ain't praying with me yet. I know what it is. Some of us like to think that we deserve everything that we have. We like to think that we deserve the stuff that we have. And that we deserve the things that we have. And that we deserve the family that we have. And that we deserve every blessing that we have. But I believe that if you think about all the times that you messed up and got it all wrong, if you think about those times when you went left, when you knew God told you to go right, when you think about all those times when you were not just wrong, I'm talking about those times when you were dead wrong, when you think about all of your faults, your flaws, and your failures, it's then that you've been able to recognize that if God gave you what you really deserved, you wouldn't have you have right now but because God's grace has got you covered he looks beyond your faults and blesses you with stuff that you don't even deserve oh is there anybody here who can testify that you thank God that he blessed you with stuff that you know you don't even deserve uh, can I preach it like I feel it 
if you pay attention to the text, what you'll notice is that from verses 13 through verses 16, Paul is actually testifying. And if you know anything about Paul, if you read and study your Bible, if you know anything about Paul's spiritual resume, then you know that Paul had a testimony. Come on up in here. He, he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Met him when he was still called Saul. Met, met him where he used to be. And because he met him where he used to be, Jesus cleaned him up and made him better. I don't know about you, but that probably sounds like most of our testimonies. God met us where we used to be. Cleaned us up and made us better. Oh, come on, don't sit there and look at me with that tone of face. You may not be perfect, but somebody ought to be able to thank God that you're not who you used to be. You may not be all that you need to be, but thanks be to God, you ain't who you used to I wish I had a witness in here. University. And one day in my class, Pastor Thomas, I invited one of my students up to the front of the classroom. I wrote a question on the board and I told her to pick up the dry erase marker and write in the correct answer. She wrote the wrong answer. So I handed her the eraser and gave her another chance. She wrote the wrong answer a second time, but I told her to erase what she did. She wrote the right answer the third time. What are you trying to tell us, preacher? I'm simply trying to tell you that grace is nothing more than a spiritual eraser. It allows you to clean up the mistakes that you made. Grace gives you another chance. 
chance to get some things right in your life. Let me do a pew check right here. Is there anybody here who can give God some praise for God's grace? You ought to give him some praise because you and I know that he gave you a second chance and a third chance and a fourth chance and a fifth chance and a sixth chance and a seventh chance. He's the God of another You're making me nervous. Here it is. God has given everybody in here a whole lot of reasons to tell them thank you. If you don't believe me, just look right over there. Like you and me. 
Y'all missing it? Bible says that while we were yet sinners, God, I need some Bible reads. Help me right here. He died for you and for me. In other words, he died on the front. Stayed in the grave all day Saturday. But early. Need some Baptists to help me holler right here. I said early. On a Sunday morning. Got up from the grave. All power in his hand. He did all that. So that you and I. Could be saved. Y'all not feeling me yet. Uh, pass time, pass time. Uh, I was reading an article not too long ago. That was talking about new age Christians. That was talking about Christians of this new age and the new millennium. And the interesting thing about the article, Brother Deacons, is that the article said, watch, that new age Christians don't like hearing the pastor talk about sin in church. Because they believe that talking about sin makes them feel uncomfortable. They'd rather hear about prosperity. They, they'd rather hear about blessings increase and overflow. But I stopped by St. Peter to tell somebody that Jesus did not die on a bloodstained cross just so you can have prosperity increase and overflow. He died on a cross to save you and me. I believe the songwriter said it best. Jesus went to Calvary. Save a wretch like you and me. They hung him high, stretched him wide. He hung his head. For you he died. But that's not how the story ends. Because three days later, he rose again. I know that we like to save our best friends. For when the Lord gives us stuff, For the breakthroughs that come our way But every now and then You ought to give God some praise Just because He saved you Hallelujah When I was sinking Deep in sin Far from the peaceful soul Very deeply Staying within no more. Uh, the master of the sea. Uh, heard by the spirit cry. Uh, and from the waters. Uh, he lifted me. Uh, is there anybody here. Uh, who can give God praise. Cause he lifted. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me get back to the text. I gotta go. Paul. testimony to make a pastoral proclamation about the preeminent purpose of Jesus him said he came into the world to save sinners like you and me and here it is watch right after he makes this pastoral proclamation he then returns to his personal testimony. Because right after he talks about Jesus dying to save us. He then comes clean about another truism of his life. He says that when it comes to being a sinner. I am the worst. Are y'all reading your Bibles? I'm preaching the word of God. Let me help you see it this way. Gaddis translation. He says... When it comes to sinning, I got a PhD in sin. Y'all ain't gonna help me right here. He, he's saying, on my best day, I'm still a sinner. And I just believe, I don't know about y'all, but I believe that we need more Pauls in the church. We need more folk in the church who are willing to take off that holier than thou facade put aside that fake righteousness
righteousness and get real and admit that on your best day, you a sinner too. Need somebody help me right here. One, 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 of the reasons, one of the reasons that the church is in decline, one of the reasons that young folk don't want to fool with the church is because they see the church as filled with hypocrites. With people who like to act like they ain't struggling with no sin. But what Paul is trying to teach you and I is that you need to stop sitting there acting like you ain't struggling with nothing. Because everybody in here is a sinner. But can I give you some good news? Come in, here it is. Even though all of us are sinners, all of us are never that far from the Lord's mercy. The Bible says that goodness and mercy shall follow us. I need some Bible readers. All the days of our lives. The Bible says that because our God is faithful, new mercies meet us morning by morning. And here it is. The reason that mercy is following you all the days of your life. And the reason you get new mercies morning by morning is because your God, our God, our God wants to put us on display. Let me show you what I mean. Watch the text. In verse 15, Paul declares that when it comes to sin, he's the worst. But in verse 16, Paul then says that even though he's a sinner, God wants to make an example of him. In other words, God wants to put him on display so that folk around him can see that if God can use him, God can use anybody. So that folk around him can see that if God saved him, God can save anybody. So that folk around him can see that God is able to use sinners to do great things for the kingdom of God. Come here, here it is. God wants to use you. Because there's some folk around St. Peter's who still need to be saved. There's some folk in Atlanta who need to be saved. There's some folk in this community who need to be saved. And God wants to put you on display. Not so folk can see you, but so that folk can see that if God saved you, God can save them too. And if God can use you in spite of your faults, in spite of your failures, in spite of your flaws, in spite of your imperfections, that same God is able to use them too. Y'all not getting it yet. Let me try it this way. Back in the day, when I bought my first little house, I needed a new washer and dryer. A friend of mine told me, don't go to Sears in the mall. Go to the Sears outlet on Mountain Industrial Boulevard in Tucker, Georgia. Because if you get there, what you'll find is that the appliance that you need is half price. So, I went to the Sears outlet on Mountain Industrial Boulevard in Tucker, Georgia. And when I opened the door and walked into the store, sure enough, the washers and dryers were half the price. I asked the sales associates why the units were half price. Here's what she said. She said, these units are dented and scratched. These units have some imperfections. But the manufacturer
culture understands that in spite of their imperfections, they can still dry your clothes, they can still wash your clothes. In spite of the faults and flaws, they can still be used. I started shouting in the store because I said to myself, that's exactly how God works. In spite of your flaws, in spite of your imperfections, He's able to use you to do great things. Is there anybody here who can give God praise? Because in spite of your flaws, He still saved you. In spite of your imperfections, thanks be to God, He's still using you. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. Thank you, Jesus. Be sure to tell them thank you. But hold up. There's more. Cause if you look at the text, not only does the text tell us what we ought to thank God for. That we ought to thank Him for grace and mercy. But here's the cool part. It also tells us how to thank the Lord. Can, can I tell you how to thank the Lord? Come, come here. I'm going to start where I end where I started. Here it is. You thank the Lord. Coming into the Lord's house. Lifting up your dignified hands. Opening up your dignified mouth. And telling the Lord... Thank you. Let me help you see it real quick. I ain't got a lot of time. I gotta go. I don't know about your mama, but here's how my mama raised me. Mama said, when somebody does something for you, the next two words that better come out your mouth. Now listen, 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 listen. In other words, she wasn't going for none of this. I'ma thank him in my heart. I wish you would. Say I go just thank him. You better open up your mouth and utter two words. Thank you. And you know what that says to me? That when God's been you want to do is what your mama taught you to do. You want to open up your mouth and tell the Lord, hey, come in, we family, right? Can I tell y'all what bothers me as a pastor? When I stand at God's sacred desk, look out in the audience and see blessed people of God who sit in the pew and act as if you are doing a God, God a favor for being in God's house. I have issues with blessed folk who never lift up their hands, never open their mouths, and say thank you. Here's how I see it. If you got a dog that never barks, something wrong with that dog. If you got a cat that never meows, something wrong with that cat. And if you got a blood wash, baptized, born again, blessed believer who never tells the Lord thank you, there's something wrong. Y'all ain't gonna never invite me back to the same <laughs> Sit down, sit down, let me close, let me close. Watch, watch, watch. I'm, I'm done, I'm teaching right here, I'm gonna sit down. Pa pa Paul has been testified. But he takes a moment to lay his testimony aside 
to give God a praise of thanksgiving. Let me show it to you. Watch. The Bible and scholars help us to understand that verse 17 is what's referred to as a doxology. The word doxology comes from the Latin word doxologia, which simply means an expression, a verbal expression of glory and praise to our God. In other words, a doxology is nothing more than a short praise of thanksgiving. So Paul, watch, had been testifying. So now he decides to stop testifying and give God praise or give praise to the one who gave him the testimony in the first place. Paul decides to give God a short praise of thanksgiving. Listen to his praise of thanksgiving. Now to the king. Eternal. Immortal. Invisible. Y'all ain't caught up with me yet. To the only God. Be honor and glory. Hello, preacher. Forever and ever and ever. Amen. Y'all miss it. Let me give it to you again. Surgeon. I said it wasn't a surgeon. It was no. 